Hey everybody, we are back in Technology Room. Hope you have a nice networking break. Uh, we have Ruslan Kavlin from Moodle HQ, and he will talk about dynamic rules. And it's going to be especially interesting for plugin developers. And he's going to stop in different moments of his presentation to answer questions. So just remember to type the questions. Thanks. Hello, uh, welcome uh, to the session. Uh, thank you for your interest in uh, dynamic rules. Uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, dynamic rules uh, and how developer can implement one for their own plugin or any other Moodle component. Uh, dynamic rule is a part of Moodle workplace. That's a commercial Moodle available through partners. Uh, it is enriched with a tool to use uh, in organization to facilitate training and onboarding process. It got such tools as organization structure, program certifications, multi-tenancy. And one of those tools is Dynamic Rules, which is designed for automating things. Uh, we got a demo site available, which will be available during the moot. Uh, if you navigate to the forum post about this session, uh, I, I just added uh, literally 15 minutes ago the, the, the login detail that you can use in the next couple of days. Uh, there was some session about workplace already, and there will be more. Uh, in particular, those who are developers, uh, they might be interested in the two sessions to borrow, the, the more oriented for developers, one about multi-tenancy, and another one is about report builder. So here I'll focus on uh, dynamic rules only. Uh, I'll start with a review of uh, its purpose and its functionality. Uh, I will mention some new stuff we added in uh, version 3.9. Uh, then I'll go through a uh, condition and action uh, development process. That's parts of the dynamic rules, the crucial parts of dynamic rules that actually make, you know, responsible for all this automation stuff. Uh, so I'll, I'll mention what you need to pay attention as a developer. Then I'll demonstrate uh, those principles on a, on a special rule condition, which I developed just for this. Uh, session. So we'll, we'll have a look through the actual code. Uh, finally, I'll stop on, uh, on the code for dynamic rule action, and we'll conclude with a quick uh, recap of the important aspects of uh, workplace uh, plugin, of, of implementing uh, work, uh, making your plugin friendly, uh, you know, usable with Moodle workplace. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll stop a few times during presentation to answer your questions. So feel free to add them whenever you have them. Once, once I got some, I'll, I'll stop and, and answer. Uh, right. So dynamic rules, you might might have heard of the uh, IFTTT concept. Uh, that means if, if this, then that. Uh, that. That concept normally used in, in the context of Internet of Things. Uh, there is a web service where you can uh, define if something happens in one device or in some sort of site, uh, then some action triggered somewhere else could be also device. It could be some API backend with, to you know to do something with it, some sort of application or software. So that's basically the same thing, but for Moodle context. So we introduce some automation by making various parts of Moodle play together using this dynamic role thing. So technically, this is about applying actions to users who meet certain criteria. And this criteria is defined by rule conditions. Say, for example, user com uh, completed the course, that could be a condition, and the action could be send notification to that user 
or add that user to some sort of cohort so allocate him to certification or another example the condition could be user got uh, some profile field set to something say for example ct set to barcelona for example and then you want to filter those users and send them an invite to some offline meetup for example in in the same city where they live you can use dynamic rules for, for that so it basically provides a flexible way of linking core components and plugins uh, together we got some component specific rules which is beyond this presentation but they uh, ju just so you know they exist so the dynamic rules also used within components uh, examples of components would be uh, tool uh, certification and tool program that that got a special tab in a in a in a settings where you can uh, where, where where you can allocate actions to predefined conditions and those conditions are only related to to those particular uh, components in Mendel. Uh, we got a user manual and the links to this user manual is also published on a, on a forum as well so you can have a look uh, later so a rule a rule is a named entity uh, to define a set of uh, conditions and actions a rule can have uh, can be in a different state could be just when you create uh, when you create a rule will be a draft and then you can enable it uh, to make it active so the uh, rule will actually start working and you know doing its job whatever you define in it uh, rule can be enabled only when it contains at least one condition and uh, one action uh, if you don't have condition action that means rule empty you can't enable that uh, when the rule is not active it can be edited so you can pre-create rule then add some more conditions or uh, some actions before you you actually enable and make it uh, make it uh, active uh, we got a special setting uh, uh, when you create a rule you can define how many times this rule can be applied to a particular user uh, th this is just limiting the num the the number how many times the action can be can be applied to user for, for example if you got condition rule or user enrolled into course and some action associated with that and then user got enrolled into course and then user got unenrolled and enrolled again so if you set your limit rule to just run once, then on a second enrollment user will not be processed uh, by, by, by this dynamic rule. Rule conditions basically provide a way to fetch uh, users who match certain criteria. We got lots of conditions. I'll, 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 I'll make a short demo just once I finish with, with this brief intro so we go to selection of conditions where we can select uh, whatever condition we want to apply we add condition configure it in a certain way save it and then we can add more conditions if you want uh, the logic is that users need to match all the conditions uh, listed there and in only that case the action will be applied to this set of users that match all the conditions similar way actions also a list from which you can select uh, actions uh, as well as condition in the previous slide they, they they could be defined in dynamic rules itself or they can be defined somewhere in module in the plugin or in the other component uh, just small note on uh, permissions uh, this is a new feature for dynamic rules which we introduce in 3.9 uh, well obviously to to be able to control dynamic rules you you would need uh, capability to manage dynamic rules uh, but 
once you got that capability, there might be a case when when you when you give this capability not to site admin but to some user with different permissions. And uh, what we added, we added the the feature that each condition and actions got capabilities associated with it. So, say for example, if a user is not allowed to issue badge, for example, user will not see the issue badge action listed uh, and won't be able to use it. Um, so user can only add condition action. Uh, she has capabilities uh, to add. Uh, likewise, once the rule uh, has been configured in a certain way and other user might see it in a list, uh, the, the other user will only be able to edit it if uh, she has capability to edit all conditions in, and actions in, uh, in that role. Uh, triggering rule. rule. Rules can be triggered by cron or event. That depends on a particular set of conditions uh, that rule has. Uh, for example, uh, like enroll to the course uh, condition that would have an event associated with that that we can trace and trigger rule on that. But for example, some conditions like user hasn't logged into the site for the last 10 days, uh, there will be no event with that. So that's a sort of state of thing. So some conditions don't have event. They, they, they run by cron and uh, to verify that state, it would internally run a database query to figure out who, who haven't logged in to Moodle for the last 10 days. Uh, once at least one user matched the rule, uh, conditions can't be edited. This is just to prevent the case when rule can be corrupted in some way, because if some users match it already and then you change the condition, it become you might not see result you expect because the rule would assume those users who already met conditions they already met, but condition changed to different one. Uh, I think that's it about introduction. Let's let's do a very short demo. Okay. Right. This is how Moodle Workplace site looks like. So we navigate to dynamic rule. Uh, we don't have any active rules at the moment. Let's create a new one, just for example. Test rule one. If this is the setting to limit the number of uh, times actions are applied to each user, we won't enable it for now. So we go to condition stop. So on, on this uh, on this tab, we can allocate conditions and select it from this list. Say, for example, I want a course course completed condition. Now, set it for say completed after this particular date. And save change changes. So I got cross completed condition added. Uh, or user not enrolled. The user not enrolled. I know for sure that none of my users enrolled in course B. Uh, I save this and I actually probably need to remove this course completed. Just to leave this one. So I see six user match this condition here because none of them is enrolled uh, to, 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 to this course. Similar to uh, action tab. So we set we, we, we set notification. Uh, 
place at outer force P. Just, just as an example. Yeah. Then we're going to go to back to dynamic uh, rules tab and see that our rule is listed now. And enable it. Conditions will be locked when at least one user is affected by the role. Enable anyway. We can disable it. And if we don't need this role, we could just uh, archive it. So click archive and it goes to archived tab. Right. Uh, have a look if we got any questions so far. Right, question from Tim Hunt. How we can make our plugins for Chris Moodle Workplace? We can't get a copy of Workplace to test against. Uh, uh, the answer is you, if you if you need access to Moodle Workplace, uh, you you need to contact your partner to to to, to do that. Uh, so Moodle Workplace is only available through uh, partners. Right, any other questions? No. Um, go further. Defining condition and action in your plugin. Uh, so, Plugins should provide classes that define condition or action uh, for rules. Uh, developer uh, who is implementing a conditional action in their plugin uh, uh, is supposed to uh, define some general information about a conditional action that would include title, category, uh, description, availability maybe. Uh, developer should define capabilities required for adding or editing a condition on action. Uh, configuration form and form validation that actually the form that appears when we edit uh, condition or action. And uh, depending on whether the conditional action that will be SQL snippet uh, to match users for condition and for action that would be a special method to apply some uh, action. Uh, capabilities required for adding or editing condition and action. When you define capabilities, uh, think of uh, access to users at destination entity. So for example, uh, for condition, you should assume that the user who is adding that condition into rule should be able to see users in the entity. For example, if the course enrolled, if you, you're using course enrolled condition, you need capability to users in a, in, a, in a course, not just the course details or listing of courses. And for example, for action, uh, uh, the question you should ask is, I should be able to apply this action to, to the actual user. So like, for example, issue batch action, the capability for that action would be uh, to actually issue batch to use, not just list uh, badges. Uh, Setting capabilities correct is important aspect because it's easy intr to introduce privilege esca escalation if you don't configure it correctly. If, for example, if you check just, uh, there might be a case when user might not be able to enroll user directly to course, but if, for example, the capability for the dynamic rule plugin is misconfigured just to be able to list the course, but not to enroll users into course, then you can actually add it and enroll people. 
form and formal addition. So those two methods uh, required to produce the form and validate the form. The form validation method is pretty much identical to the one. I'll show it later how, how the actual method looks like. It's pretty much identical to uh, validate methods in Moodle quick form. So you, you check that by the configuration supplied is correct and highlight the errors. Uh, capability check here is not needed generally. So we got those capability check methods and the data sub before it's saved to the database, it will be validated against user can edit capability, uh, which will throw the error. So just don't focus on capabilities here, just check that the configuration is correct. Though another example where you can, you, what you can use as a validation, you can, you can make some deeper check. For example, initially for the form, you just list courses and say, for example, in uh, user enrolled condition, you, you got the second drop down menu where you can select the actual uh, enrollment method. And in validation, you would probably need to check that the particular course that you selected got, got the method that you picked. Configuration validation, that's uh, another method that exists uh, within, within the plugin class. This is designed, this is sort of backend method which dynamic rule run uh, to check whether condition uh, or action is configured correctly before actually running the rule. Uh, this just to prevent the case like you created uh, course related condition or action, but course has been deleted. So if that course doesn't exist anymore, obviously the rule can't be executed. So we got con configuration validation method. Uh, again, you don't need to check any permission here. Just check that the rule is still valid, uh, uh, conditional action is still valid according to what, what this conditional action is doing. Uh, Yeah, for one example, just for course completion condition, we, we, we check that the course exists and that completion is enabled in that course. Because if someone disabled completion, this uh, uh, condition can't be used anymore. So how to define a condition in your plugin? If you define in that, you need to create a class which extends tool dynamic rule condition SQL. Uh, you need to define namespace, which will be your plugin name slash tool dynamic rule slash condition, and place that within your plugin directory into classes tool dynamic rule subdirectory. Tool dynamic rule condition subdirectory and define all abstract methods. At that point, your condition become functional. So in that, once you got the class, you'll, you can define title description. Uh, description needs to be uh, basically a method that return description that will appear on the screen, but it needs to be uh, intuitive so the user would know immediately what this condition is about. So you probably need to look into the actual configuration and put concatenate a bit of information to, to actually uh, provide information on this particular uh, condition. Like for example, user is enrolled to course, user is not enrolled into course B uh, since particular date. Then you provide form and form validation methods, permissions, uh, which is those two capabilities check for adding and editing, uh, configuration validation, uh, broken condition description, that's another description method. Uh, I'll show it later. It's, it's basically a string to show in case this uh, configuration is not valid anymore. Say if course has been deleted, the as a plugin developer, you you know what happened, so you you need to, to
to highlight that and show you the, that this condition is broken because calls does not exist anymore. A scroll snippet to filter users. Uh, there is optional availability and event subscription, depending on whether you need that uh, or not uh, in your plugin. And import, export, and mapping methods. I won't stop on those. Uh, they're pretty straightforward to implement, and uh, uh, abstract class got good documentation as well on how to uh, use that. But import, export uh, is actually been used for import and export. That's also a new feature in Workplace 3.9. And tomorrow, Emilio will be presenting on that. Uh, let's switch to the actual uh, condition plugin, which I designed just for this session. The, our condition will be user last access to course. The requirement for this condition would be to fetch users who haven't accessed course for certain duration. Uh, we'll have a form where we will add uh, course after select element and duration element. That's just a minimum we want just to demonstrate. In, in reality, you probably elaborate it more and add some uh, maybe checkbox to select whether include users who actually never access the course uh, or, or not, or whether have an option like users who haven't accessed the course since particular time rather than in a relative period like last five days or 10, 10 days. With regard to permission, we would need a view a course view participants capability for both editing uh, and adding conditions. The difference is for editing, we will actually check that against this config configured course context while for adding that, we will we will do slightly different thing. We will search the courses in the system where a user got that capability. And if there is at least one course, then we can add this condition. Configuration validity check. Uh, the requirement for this is just the co course should exist. And for SQL snippet, we will uh, make sure the user is enrolled. User last access time is lower than current time minus condition configured duration. And we will include those who never logged in by default. Right. A Take a look at the actual uh, example uh, snippets. So for the title, uh, we, we got a method called get title, where we define just a string output. Uh, it will be the title shown uh, in, the, in the menu where you select condition. And once it's selected, it will be the title shown in the header. Uh, description uh, methods called get description. So for now, I'll just output the string there, identical to the title. But as I said, it, it probably needs more. It, it needs to look into configuration of this particular condition and put together more uh, something more sensible, telling user this is condition about to, to fetch users who haven't logged in for the last months, for example. Form definition. Uh, form definition method is called get config form. Got one parameter which will be passed inside this method is Moodle form, where you can actually add your elements. So in this particular case, I add its element course after select element. Uh, I set some extra parameter to that. So for required capability, Moodle course, you participants. So I only list courses where user got right uh, capability. 
Uh, and I added duration element where user can select the, the duration uh, for which user hasn't logged in. And once, once you save that, the course last access uh, form uh, in, in the actual interface will look like this small screen on the right. Form validation, uh, it's called validate config form. You get the data array, which is what users submitted in the form. And then you can look at what has been submitted and do some validation. In this particular case, I just checked that the course record uh, exists. Uh, and if it doesn't, then I highlight highlight the, the error on the, uh, on the element. Uh, adding permission, uh, the method is called user can add. Uh, as I said, we, we use slightly uh, different thing to, to what to what you you may use in other uh, condition actions. Uh, here we we actually search courses where user got required capability to see if if there is at least one such course. If it doesn't if it, if such course doesn't exist. Uh, the uh, conditions will not appear in the menu. Uh, in this particular case, this can be replaced with a different method that we uh, what we have. It's called is available. Uh, so, for for this example, we can actually return true in user can add, but make make it unavailable if there are no courses. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll show maybe some example later how, how that may look like. Uh, editing permission, uh, user can edit, the, that's the name of the method. Uh, and you got uh, config data passed as a parameter, so you validate capability against that configuration data. In this particular case, we check capability against this particular uh, course context that has been configured for this uh, condition. Configuration validity is configuration valid method, just supposed to return Boolean. So we check whether the course exists. If it doesn't exist, it returns false and the error appear on the interface. Uh, and get broken description that uh, basically the error if 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 this particular condition is broken and below you see the screenshot how it will look like in the interface if condition is broken so you'll got this small error uh, in tag at the corner and it says this condition contains an error uh, again for the real scenario you might provide more information what type of error is that uh, that the cause doesn't exist or something. Uh, next thing, SQL snippet. Uh, this is an example of how the abstract method looks like. So you just get SQL and it's supposed to return an array of three elements, join, where, and parameters array. And assume this, this out, the output of this method is con con concatenated in a way uh, that you select from user table and you add join that that you get from this method and you add where parameter return from so it's obviously simplified it's slightly different in reality but that's what you have to keep in mind when you design uh, this, this this method so this is just one of example uh, get SQL for the cohort member. So for join, we return join uh, cohort me me member table. Uh, it joined on the user ID and the where condition is that the cohort ID is equal to the one defined in this particular condition. So when, when that condition will be executed by that dynamic rule, the query 
obviously simplified version will look like like this one. And for our case, the SQL snippet uh, will be something like this. So we will actually return empty join, but we will we will do subquery within the uh, where condition. So that exists and the subquery to to join uh, user enrollment and roll table and lab join uh, user last access uh, where we will uh, in. And we had a condition where we said that the last access uh, timestamp should be below current time minus the period defined in the configuration, or it could be no for, for those cases when user never locked in. Right, let's, let's have a quick look. Let's create a new rule. It rule plus two. A condition cost last access. This is our condition. Uh, let's add it to cost A. Five days. And we got one user matching this uh, condition. Have a quick look at the course. So, course A, course A, enrolled users. So we got user one who accessed that course and second user never accessed this course. So only two users enrolled. One accessed it, another didn't. Uh, and our condition showed us exactly the same thing. Let's go to condition again. So user to never access the course. And if you set it to just few hours, just user access 15 hours it goes. So if you set it to three hours, we got those two users actually matching uh, this uh, condition. Uh, here on the left hand side you can see user is a member of cohort and this this uh, condition is not available that's that's the example i mentioned so i got the capability to add it but there are no cohorts cre uh, created on this site so therefore this uh, this condition can can be used uh, Right, we got some questions. Uh, question from Farhan. Can we do the equivalent of all conditions? Uh, not at the moment, no, they all, they all uh, in a logical uh, con con conjunction, I think the, that's the proper name for that. So it's, uh, they, they all got and condition uh, be between uh, and lo lo logic between conditions. Uh, from a uh, question from Isabel, uh, from a teacher point of view, once you know which are your users who haven't entered in a certain time, could the condition sent automatically uh, pre done message to them? Uh, yes, but that's exactly what, uh, ah, well, I didn't show it obviously. Yeah, you can add the action. An action would be send notification. 
and when once you enable that uh, once you enable that uh, rule uh, have another look so here we could go to actions and add notification and define some notification once we enable that uh, rule the the user who uh, haven't logged in for certain period will get notification uh, not uh, okay tim hunt is correcting me yes yeah you're right tim <laughs> uh, moodle core has sql joint class for this uh, purpose uh, yes it, it, it does have yes uh question from guido rendon sorry if i uh, say your name incorrectly congratulations excellent okay uh, can you show your slide yes slides will be available and actual recording will be available as well so if you navigate back uh tomorrow to the to the actual listing of the of the session I think there, there is there is a way to to view basically the the recordings appear next day, so you can you can watch what what has been recorded yesterday and tomorrow. You'll you'll be able to to view this uh, presentation. I'll 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 share slide slides as well uh, on 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 the forum. Right. Let's go further. Mm -hmm. Define an action in your plugin uh action is pretty much similar to condition uh, with the only difference that instead of S sql methods we got a different method for process users so you create the class extending uh tool dynamic rule outcome base class you define namespace for that uh, you place in the right directory it should be classes tool dynamic rule outcome And then you define all abstract methods. Uh, again, you define a series of methods, tile description, form, permissions, configuration validated, validation, and apply to users method. That's highlighted method is the only difference to, to condition. Uh, same availability uh, method is available if, if that's applicable. Uh, actually, there is another difference. It doesn't have event subscription. Uh, only conditions uh, got that. Example rule action uh, apply to users method. Uh, th this is just a snippet from the abstract class. So the, the method is called apply to users. As a parameter, it receives uh, an array of users that list of users would be those users who match your set of conditions then you just iterate through that users objects and do what you need to do in your action uh, this is the example from the cohort outcome uh, apply to user methods just iterate through all users and uh, call methods cohort out user methods uh, to add users to the cohort that has been configured for this outcome uh, for each user in the in the array so the once that function has been run all users will will appear in the in the right cohort Right, the summary of what I said. So we got this decentralized definition of condition and actions that can be could be defined in in your plugin. Uh, if you if you do that for the uh, for the core components, uh, it might be a good idea to add them directly to the uh, tool dynamic rule that got a set of uh, conditions and actions. Uh, or you can define in components as well. Uh, so to implement that, you need to create class instance and implement all abstract methods in, in your class. 
uh, make sure you provide a good description so users know what actual condition action uh, does. Uh, capabilities are very important and uh, should always uh, take users into account. So the capability for editing and adding should always ensure that your user who is adding those conditional action has access to users inside that entity. Uh, form validation, uh, just to validate configuration, you don't need to worry about capabilities check. It will be checked anyway when the data is being saved. And configuration validation, again, just think as if it's run by system, no uh, capability check needed there, just to make sure the configuration is correct at a very low level, uh, like for example, course exists or some particular enrollment method exists. I think that's it. Tomorrow there will be more sessions that uh, listed on this screen. Uh, make sure you attend those uh, if you're interested. And again, a recording of this session will be available tomorrow. We have some time to to ask questions. Uh, so I'll, I'll see there are there are more. Uh, question from Tim Hunt. Are there plans to contribute to this system model core? Yes, there are plans, but there are no timelines at the moment for that. Uh, so one day you will see that in Moodle core. I can't tell more, I'm sorry. <laughs> I have another question from Sam Marshall. Uh, I don't know if you want. Yeah, yeah. Uh, with a sample condition, uh, use not accessed course, I guess it would need to run it in Chrome. How do you tell if how often to run? Does it run every time? It's run every minute. It's run every minute. Uh, also, okay, they read the whole question. Also, uh, would it send user a notification every time it runs unless you choose only do action one time? No, it, it, it will send only once because once the condition matched, that would be a trigger for that. So on the next run, user is already matched. So you won't send, we won't send notification on the next cron run. Although if you unenroll user and enroll it again, unless you limited that number, how many times action is applied, user will receive notification again. That's how it works. Uh, the, the, if you click on the help icon in, in that setting, I, it, it got a good explanation of what will happen. And also there is some explanation in the wiki. By the way, I think the system looks pretty nice. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you. We're gonna check one last time. There is one from oh here uh, from Parham. Is the source code of the condition plugin you show us in the demo available anywhere? Uh, this this particular condition plugin will be will be added to to dynamic rule. Uh, will 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 be integrated into tool dynamic rule very soon so you you'll you'll see it available if if you are one of the partners who can access uh, the code so thank you very much uh if there is more questions you can just type them on the forum and i'm sure ruslan is gonna be later on or tomorrow i'm sorry yeah you you, you can ask the question on the forum dedicated to this session so i'll I'm subscribed to that forum, so I'll answer your question if uh, if you post something there. Okay, thanks. A, thanks a lot, and it has been a, a great finish of the day. And just Thank remember you, yeah. that past five, we have treasure hunt. So we hope you see all of you there. Thanks a lot.
have a nice yes, thank evening you. or where you are. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> right, thank you.